Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. These 24 can knock it something. Every night's a dub. I love it. Every night got hot. It's pumping. Every night new blood. Rush it. Every line is up to something. Walk it like a uh, there you go. Walk it like a uh, talk it uh, from it. Nate Torres. And we understand that Nate uh, wrote that song in concert with Dick Sokol, <laughs> who's a family uh, friend. What a coincidence. Coincidence. We introduced Nate to our audience yesterday. And lo and behold, we booked Dick as a guest today to talk about Nick Taylor. And we find out that the Zokels know Nate Torres. Uh, Dick Sokol joining us from Predator Ridge. Thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? Oh, that was good. That was good, Donnie. Yeah, doing very good. Thanks. Nice to be on with you. Good to talk about uh, the PJ Tour. But yes, Nate Torres, he's my my two sons' best friend. He's like a family member. And Donnie, he was at uh, the BC Hall of Fame induction announcement. Uh, he was there. I mean, he, he wasn't going to miss this. So Nate is a very close friend. So when I heard about this. My son sent me uh, the, the clip, and I heard about this, so I, I had to step in. Uh, this is great. We love Nate, and he's uh, we want we want BC Torres sixty four the brand to grow. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see, we'll see if we can get it played at Rogers Arena. We've had a lot of success trying to get songs we like played at Rogers Arena. Hopefully, that'll continue yeah, with no Nate. Kidding. By the way, uh, Dick, uh, congratulations! Uh, I couldn't believe you were beside me during the BC. Uh, Sports Hall of Fame uh, original in- induction when the announcement was made. I thought you'd you'd, you'd been Already there a, a long there. time ago, but congratulations! Well, you know, it's funny when I said thank you and you, to you as well because when I when we sat down together, I went, "Oh man, this is a big deal." Uh, Donnie's covering this, and then when, I, when you went up before <laughs> me, I said, "Oh my God, he's yeah, in! This is yeah. fantastic! Yeah, this is fantastic!" So yeah. now, right back at you. Um, you know, I think our our, our time frame paralleled. I remember, you know, the first time I was on sports page, you were probably about, I don't know, maybe a year older than me at the time, and I was a kid. <laughs> time flies, and, and again, congrats. Okay, uh, your reaction to what Nick Taylor was up to in, in Phoenix. What a victory. Yeah, it really was. A couple of great storylines. Number one, um, the, the evolution of the wasted management of uh, Phoenix <laughs> Open. Mm. That, that That's a story into its own, which you may have questions. But yes, Nick Taylor's performance is is just quite remarkable, and and I, I I took the liberty to say that the best thing about Nick Taylor right now is that he's going to be a better player and person tomorrow than he was yesterday. It's just his nature. He he he's a tremendously grounded individual, which and I'll give kudos to his parents for bringing him up. He 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 has a very high level of acceptance, which means like he's he's not a prima donna and he knows and accepts the fact that golf can go bad at any moment and he has the maturity to perform and he's getting the comfort level at the highest level i think that with the distractions at the waste management phoenix opens and how he handled it how he performed was was fantastic so he's only getting better uh with age uh, like you and i donnie <laughs> <laughs> uh, dick that's his fourth pga tour win do you sense a major victory for him around the corner Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. And, you know, so just keep in mind the type of pressure that's on all, any Canadian at the RBC Canadian Open. It's been, you know, since 1954, we've had to deal with this. I had the lead going into the final round one year back in the late 80s and, and succumbed to the pressure. And the fact that he was able to do that in that manner. And now, you know, it's just testament to his level of his, of his mindset and his comfort level. And he's feeling comfortable to be able to get through that RBC Canadian Open win the way he did. And now at a tournament like the Waste Management, where there's all kinds of distractions. I mean, there's fights in the stand, there's fights oh. with players, there's too much booze. I mean, it's just going on. And to be able to focus in on that is just, as I mentioned, testament to his mindset. Uh, what about the fact he had to play 29 holes on Sunday and the turnaround from round three to four was only eight minutes? Uh, how, how tough was that? Well, that's not unusual. Anytime they have rain delays in Phoenix, just understand is constantly in, in every year because of um, the daylight. And what yeah. happens every morning is a, when the sun comes up, there's a heat inversion and a flash frost and it's cold. So they have to wait for the, the golf course to thaw out. And so there's 
there is always a time sh um, limitation that the field, they can't get them in. So it's when you trying to catch up on rounds missed due to uh, not finishing yes the day before his round, you have moments like that. That happens. You don't like them, but it's what you have to do. And it's part of the last man standing type of uh, uh, mindset that you have to have. And he handled it perfectly, obviously. You, you mentioned... Uh... A lot of drunk people. There was fighting. There was fans jumping into sand traps. The golfers were ripping the fans. That's not a good look on Phoenix, uh, Dick. What has the PGA Tour got to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Well, they, you remember a couple years ago? Uh, I mean, to think well, – let me just back up a minute. To think that this event in the, on the trajectory that it's been on isn't going to get like this is just naivety. Yeah. Um, two years ago, we talked, remember when they exploded around the 16th hole and they're throwing beer cans on the greens and, and the mm. danger factor. Like the NHL learned decades and decades and decades ago, you sell your beer in cups. <laughs> and, and, and so they did that a couple of years ago, but now it's just gotten with the, it was the perfect storm. They had weather, which allowed these guys to, you know, skid on their bare butts down hills and have these contested contests they're going to figure it out they're going to pull it back they're going to limit the number they're going to limit the alcohol sales and um, it's a model that is works very nicely it raises an enormous amount of money for the thunderbirds which gives their money to the to the local charities which is a great a, a thing to do um, so they're going to learn how to, to manage this and, and still use it as a model, but make sure. And I think the players' perspective. We saw a couple of players get in fights with the with the crowd. Yeah. They got to yeah. stop that. If you if you don't like it, don't play in the tournament. This is not a new thing. They know what they're getting into. So um, Zach Johnson, uh, you know, I think the fault goes on him, not the people, because you allow that to happen. Yeah. Talking with uh, Dick Zokel. Uh, Dick, before we let you go, what's new? What's happening up at Predator Ridge? Well, we're looking forward to uh, 2024 opening. We're going to have some remarkable, and I mean remarkable, announcements in the spring. So keep us in touch with that. Okay. But we're looking for, we've had gone through a wonderful winter. The golf course is going to be fantastic when we open and can't wait to get after it. Hope you guys can come up here soon. Do you have any um, Tiger Woods Sunday Red uh, apparel on the way. Yeah, what do you say about Sunday Red? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I get, it's just interesting that he left Nike. I'm yeah. not sure why he would do that, but obviously there is uh, some compatibility on both sides to end the relationship. Um, I, I mean, how can you not have, start with a successful brand with Sunday Red and be Tiger Woods? So this is yeah. the first week of the Genesis Open. And um, we're going to have to see what happens on Monday after it. And what, uh, it's, I clicked on and, and started following their, their, mm. their, their uh, X account and watch that thing skyrocket with numbers. No that, that's, just, that's just a beast. No kidding. Love Predator Rich. Dick, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Always a pleasure. You bet. And congrats uh, uh, again.